I'm Julie Ryder. We're here at Giants Playground in the Montana Megalis. I'm here with Dr. Sam from Bosnia, and I'm showing him the Starfire Duolith. Duolith is my word. It means two monolithic stones that identically match with a horizontal line, equal distance all the way from the top to the bottom. We're finding these all over the world. There's some underground at Yonaguni. I said that wrong. Yonaguni. Thank you. In Japan. Monuments. <laughs> They're under the, under the water. So here we have an area where you have a duolith that has a rounded bottom perfectly set into a cradle. The cradle keeps it from tipping over. So if, a, if, a earthquake hap if an earthquake happens, it rocks but doesn't fall over. In front of it, there is a geopolymer, different type of concrete. We call it an accordion because it's split like this and so it absorbs the shock of an earthquake horizontally. On this left side, you'll see a split, a diagonal split, all the way down that goes all the way through the rock. That rock is freestanding, balanced on a piece of concrete about this big. Balanced rocks. When the Rinpoche was here, he talked about being trained as a Buddhist, and the training was, they called it flying rocks. They would balance rocks in these unusual shapes all the way to the top, and that's how one of the trainings they went through um, to become a, a Rinpoche, a Buddha. And they would talk about the long sounds they would make to actually ele elevate and balance the rocks. So this is Starfire Duolith. We're at Giants Playground in the Montana Megalis. And Dr. Sam, what do you think? I think the granite is amazing material. It takes a long time for granite to form. But at least we know how it forms. So it looks like a sedimentation process. When you go to the sites where they used granite as a construction material, for example, Great Zimbabwe, that's the place where they have conical towers and hundreds of thousands of tons of granite. But they were cutting the granite in the smaller plates like tiles. How could they do that? Well, they knew that the granite which was on the top exposed to the weather was softer. So they were able to break it. The one which is below was much tougher, stronger. So basically when they were using this tile type of construction, they were only using the surface granite. However, if you can find in the structure the harder parts and softer parts mixed together, that's a perfect sign that somebody was able to shape even very strong granite and that they were actually building something. But then places like Zimbabwe or South Africa or stone circles there that are extremely old, it's very tough to distinct between archaeology and geology. And unfortunately, we have the same problem here. This is extremely old site. It is not like it was originally shaped. Why am I saying shaped? Look at this block. One possibility, it was one block which broke. Another one, what you just explained. Two pieces, almost exactly the same one next to each other. However, what's more important for me is that they've been moved mm -hmm. for 90 degrees because you see the layers on sides, the layers are coming off like this. Originally, they should be coming off horizontally, meaning that all these blocks where you can see the layers coming off at 90 degrees, it means that they've been moved and rotated for 90 degrees. Each of the blocks is about 550 tons, together more than 1,100 tons. Now that's amazing feat to move this. These are not the only ones which have been moved. We, we could see many of them move. And not only that, by building dolmens, they were showing extreme skills, but then by making balancing rocks, 
it's even more skillful. In order to make balancing rock, some places what they do, they place one tabletop block and then basically it's touching two or three places, but just the tips of other blocks. So instead of going easier way to put it on the side so it has a solid support, they were playing that way that they wanted to show how skillful they were. But that was not the main reason though. The main reason was probably they were putting the major pressure on just one point, which in return would produce some energy effects. They would know which one. Now, going through those uh, Montana megaliths today, I have concluded that besides the extreme age, these sites were going through several global catastrophes. One of them, of course, 30,000 something years back, that was the time that due to the solar flares that were solar flares that were burning the surface of the planet. They were destroying almost everything, which was of organic origin. The stone would withstand the fire, but what could not withstand was the water. The end of the last ice age, no matter which date we accept, 13,600, 12,500, 11,700, we are talking about roughly 12,000 years back. It means that those structures were here before then and during that global catastrophe, huge tidal waves. I mean, we are talking about tsunamis of uh, unimaginable power. You know, December 24, 2004, Indonesia, there was a tsunami there, which was about 25 meters, which is about 80 feet in height, 80 feet. It killed 225,000 people, 80 feet. Now imagine what we know for Europe for sure, that some of those um, ice layers, which were 3,000 meters or almost 10,000 feet thick, when the water would melt, then you would, say you would have such a powerful flood wave. They were reaching not 1,000 feet, but 3,000, even 5,000 feet. Can you imagine the power of 1,000 or 5,000 feet above us, the water coming at us? No escape for more than 99% of the people, but also almost none of the structures that existed remain in its original shape. Mm -hmm. And that would explain such a level of destruction that we are witnessing nowadays. So the original architecture is gone forever. What we see are just the remnants. So some of the dolmens, some of the balancing rocks, but we don't see the general design, the project that they had when they started building this. We don't see the houses the way we build them today with the roofs, but we do see huge rocks standing sometimes on the very straight lines. The walls, why would they do that? It had to be energetically connected. So it has always been about the energy, just the ancients were finding different ways how to reduce or amplify the energies.